Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the sheep pen. Bah! Where no goats are allowed. So, some people might think that I talk about the dark side way too much. That I talk about demons sometimes more than God. And honestly, the church that gave me the most education and mentored me the most in my ministry is a church I call the Devil Fighting Church. And that's an accusation that was uh, leveled against them often. And I will say this about my ministry, though. I have an unusually high number of atheist conversions behind me. That I've taken people that were either very agnostic or completely atheist. And I have turned things around in their thinking and brought them to Jesus on numerous occasions. And in the past, I've found that, you know, proving God is sometimes difficult. It requires a lot of faith. Uh, and it's because God isn't boastful and God doesn't take credit and God doesn't flaunt himself and God is very subtle in how he deals with us. And, you know, occasionally God really makes his presence known in some tangible way, but for the most part, it's that still small voice, right? The devil, on the other hand, is a braggart. The devil always tips his hand. He's compelled to show his power and show who he is. And I've had a great deal of luck convincing atheists, not that God is real, because that requires a lot of faith, but by convincing them that the devil is real, that demons are real, that evil is real. And it's almost a trap, a divine trap as it were, to guide them back to God because once they accept that there's a real live devil in the world, that evil is real, that demons wreak havoc in people's lives. Once you can open up their eyes and they can see that, then the pure and simple, reasonable, logical response is, if there's a devil, there must be a God. If there's a devil, there better be a God. If there's a devil, then there's got to be a God and I need him more than ever. And this is a path that you might use someday to turn the mind of an atheist. Um, so I won't, I, won't, uh, I won't apologize at all for talking about demons and unmasking the dark side and shining a light into the darkness so that you can see what you're up against. Because one thing is certain, when you really understand the enemy, then you really realize how much we can't do it without God. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit. We can't fight this devil off without divine intervention and help. That literally the devil's own tactics drive us closer to God. And the only thing that really uh, benefits the devil is when we don't believe in him. When we don't think the devil exists, when we think the devil is made up, he's a little man in a, in, a, in a little cute baby character in a red suit with a red tail and a pitchfork, right? We think he's a cartoon character, right? With a Halloween costume. The, the biggest win the devil gets is to hide who he really is. and uh, But his own pride gets the best of him, <laughs> right? So... Uh, yeah, the devil wins if you think he doesn't exist. Then you're not watching for the attack, right? So I won't shrink back at all about unmasking the dark side and sharing with you what I know about the nature of the demonic, the nature of evil, things I have learned through training and hands-on exorcisms down through the years. I have spoken to these vile beings and they have spoken back to me through someone else's mouth. On so many occasions, there's too many to number. <clears throat> sometimes it's an exorcism. Sometimes I just have the realization when I'm dealing with somebody that, oh, I get it. I'm talking to a devil. I see now. Oh, discernment, right? <clears throat> so there are characteristics that you can trace back through uh, history and through the study of these ancient gods and goddesses that can let you know who it is you're dealing with on a strategic level. Let's be clear, my, most of my hands-on experience has been dealing with lower demons who vex people in everyday life. But there are uh, demons that are regional governors. There are demons that are national uh, level, like presidents of the demons, right? And there is even, of course, obviously, uh, the head of it all, 
is Satan himself, the great adversary. So, but I think most people would agree that at this point in history, we're dealing with demonization on a mass scale, like hasn't been seen since before Christ. That it almost seems like two-thirds of the population are vexed by one kind of demon or another. There's some sort of malfunction in their lives and their behaviors. They have uh, uh, what some would call mental illnesses and uh, syndromes and uh, disorders, right, that I believe are all demonically empowered, inspired, and orchestrated. And so I deal mainly with those things, you know, the spirit of shame, the spirit of judgment, the spirit of addiction, the spirit of greed, the spirit of lies, the lion spirit. That's a big one in our country. Uh, I would say that two-thirds of the people have that one going on for sure, <laughs> right? And so, uh, however, there are these regional demons. And at the very top, is a thing that I call the unholy trinity. Now, I'm talking about four demons. One is Satan himself. He sits at the top. And this is Baphomet, as we uh, see him portrayed. Baphomet is both a feminine and a masculine spirit, a combined spirit that uh, contains, in imagery at least, uh, the attributes of a male and a female physically. And I've talked about, uh, in previous videos, this is kind of a series we're on here, I talked about the, uh, the spirit of Lilith and the goddess spirit and goddess worship and talked about how even our own capital in Washington, D.C. is a shrine to these goddesses. And uh, in previous videos, I've spoken about Lilith, right? And I have been focused on the female deities because those are the primary ones that are rising in my lifetime. Uh, so I want to talk about all of them and their relations, relationship to each other. I will say this, demons travel in packs of at least three. That I've never done any kind of exorcism on someone when there wasn't a minimum of three. And usually, usually a multiple of three, if that makes sense. Three times how many ever uh, more demons are in there. So they travel in packs of three, and they give strength to each other. One of the parts of an exorcism, as it was taught to me, is that you command the demons to separate from one, each, one another and not to gain any power or any uh, comfort from each other. And you force, you demand, command them in Jesus' name to separate from one another because they glom together and they find strength in numbers. They find strength in their in combining their heads. Their 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 you know, is it two heads are better than one kind of thing? And you know, so you have these multiples of three that you typically deal with. And at the very top of the food chain, this this multiples of three goes right down to the street devil, okay? But at the very top you've got these three primary demons. Two female and one male. And one could argue that the male and the female are neither male nor female. And the, the middle female one is a female deity that wants to be a male deity, but also wants to be a female deity. Does that make sense? That gender is very much tied to the nature of these spirits. And I'm not talking about physical attributes as much as I'm talking about personality traits that one might identify as masculine versus feminine. Okay? And... So let's, let's name them. These three demons that work under Baphomet is Baal or Moloch. That's the male spirit. Uh, Zeus or Jupiter, okay, in the Greek, uh, in the Greek mythology. And then you've got the spirit of Jezebel, which we just talked about this previous week, or this earlier this week. And then you have the spirit of Lilith, okay? So let's kind of talk about the one I haven't talked about much. Let's talk about the spirit of Molech and the, or Baal. Uh, some would call them Beelzebub, Beelzebub, the son of Baal or Baal. This uh, entity uh, appears a lot in the Bible and in apocryphal scripture and uh, in demonology and also ancient history uh, validates the Baal worship that was occurring, especially in the Middle East. And the the male deity is the god of war, right? The god of domination, the god of subjection, okay? So this is a 
overpowering, overruling, dominant, controlling spirit of a masculine sort, which doesn't seek to necessarily control every aspect of a person's life, but rather wants to have total dominance over them to do what they are told whenever they are told, uh, where but they don't really tell you what to do except the big ones. Does that make sense? So it's a type of control, but it's not the micromanagement that we see in the spirit of Lilith or Jezebel. That It's broader. It's more like a global domination, whereas the female deities tend to be more about controlling community, uh, opinion, and uh, practices on a local level. Uh, the Moloch, Baal creature, is completely about world domination and control of the masses. And so this has been the demon, the, prim, the premium, premium principle, the principal demon that the world has dealt with for centuries, really even back in the time of Christ. This is the, also the spirit of the Pharisee, once again, masculine dominant control. Um, then, but what's started to happen is along about the, the middle of the, of the end of the Victorian era, uh, and to, as a reminder, the Victorian era was a time where religion had become so powerful and dominant that it controlled every aspect of life and there was a real suppression of sexuality, a real suppression of, um, of all, any, sorts of, any sort of feminine powers, very male-dominated time. And so you have this time period where everything is so restricted and out of it becomes the beginning of what we would call the woman's movement. It starts to happen in the in the mid 1800s. Um, this is the move to vote in America, the desire to uh, allow women to have uh, more rights in marriage, and things like alimony become commonplace. Um, it gives the right women the right to divorce and leave a marriage, all things they didn't have under the dominated bail control. And one might look at this as a as a liberation of women. And it potentially was. At least that was the intention for sure. But over here on the other side, you have these two principal demons, these feminine demons that have always plagued society. But they've been waiting for their day to come. And they glommed on to this probably righteous core belief uh, and, and uh, movement that we come to call feminism or women's rights movement. And they infiltrated that basically, took it over, bled it out into our culture, and flipped it from equal rights to a dominating feminine power. And this is what has taken over in really in my lifetime. I've seen this transformation happen. And, you know, some will say, well, we still haven't had a female president. And, um, but, you know, I can make some jokes about that. But uh, women have become more powerful in politics. We have more female senators. We have more uh, female pop stars that are responsible for their own career and powerful and write their own music. We have uh, more political uh, activism in Hollywood in, in women than ever in, in the past. And, you know, women have made great strides and there's nothing wrong with that except there's a point where you reach equality and equality is not what they want. They want dominance, right? Uh, who was the recent woman on the Republican stage who says... If you want to talk about a problem, uh, ask a man. If you, want a, if you want a problem to get solved, ask a woman or something. But this kind of uh, battle of the sexes is at the primary goal. And it's really a battle between demons. It's a battle between Baal and, and, and Lilith and Jezebel in the middle. So let's kind of characterize these demons because these demons are present in your life. Forget about politics. Forget what, if you don't agree with what I said about history, you know, listen from here on out because it's a part of daily life that on the far side over here with the god of war and masculinity and dominance of female over here in the bale on the other side now you have the extreme uh, this would be the I don't need a man men aren't good for nothing uh, only good man's a that you know what I mean man <laughs> I'm so careful that I'm not going to run astray a, a of the of the censors here but you know, it's the spirit of man hating. The Jezebel doesn't hate men. She wants to control them. She's in the middle. Uh, Jezebel's a married woman, remember, in the, in the biblical story. The spirit of Jezebel is one that controls men from the inside. It's the, the spirit designed to sabotage 
a true union between a, a, a godly man and a godly woman should be a partnership. And it, you know, it should be 4951 because somebody's got to make the final veto. Uh, you know, so it's, it's definitely, God has said that it's up to the man, it's his position to lead. Right, and I talked about how we're built for leading because we're so much bigger that we're the ones should be out front in case the lion attacks you on the trail. Right, it's a natural thing, and but the Jezebel spirit seeks to separate the man and woman and create enmity between them, and then you have on each side of this of this conflict in the center of Jezebel, you've got Lilith on one side that wants to eliminate all men, that wants to uh, create a female dominated Amazon type of, of world where men don't have a say in anything and don't have the right to speak. And then over here, you got the same thing with the chauvinist spirit that's been winning for centuries and been in control of this uh, unholy trinity, but sitting over the top of them, laughing over all of it, is uh, Moloch, is uh, Bathomet is the compilation of male and female into one entity and it is the embodiment of divide and conquer. You get this demon that stirs up the men, you get this demon that stirs up the woman, right? And then when men and women are trying to do right, you send another demon in to drive division between the man and the woman, the, the actual wedge. And you know, I'm saying women had every right to fight for their independence and rights because the way they were treated in the past was not right. They were treated like property. They were treated like cattle. And I'm in no way uh, uh, saying that's a good thing. In fact, I'm saying that that's also a demon that put them there. So you have this male-dominated demon. You have this man-hating feminine demon. And then you have this wedge-driving demon in the middle. And this is what's responsible for most of the conflict in your own family, in your church, in government. Are these three demons fighting it out with each other, dividing us and conquering us as a nation, as a people, and as, honestly, a Christian nation? It's driving us away from God very effectively by destroying our happiness, our family, our peace, our prosperity. That nothing's better than two equal people saying, we're going to work together and never fight each other. And if we disagree, I'm going to give you the wearings, all right, and suck it up, buttercup. And I hope we never disagree. And that's how I believe that marriages should be. I believe how, that's how a president, vice president should respond to two men sharing leadership. There can only be one head. Anything with two heads is a freak, right? So somebody's got to be in charge, but it should be uh, equally dispersed um, and they should be an open discussion and open counsel with each other and even in times open debate. And it's just when the decision's made, we just move forward, <laughs> right, from the decision. Because somebody's got to make the final call. <clears throat> this is the thing that the devil fears most. The devil fears a unified family. He fears a husband and wife working as a team together with zero conflict and 100% capacity of uh, accomplishing things for God, for family, for country, for all the powers of good. That the devil wants to destroy that basic thing because it's the engine that drives any society. If you can get a family unit that is that works as a family, that takes care of each other, you don't need welfare because they're not going to leave anybody hanging. You don't need Social Security because the young take care of the old. You don't need anything. It's independent. It's self-sufficient. And it's the building blocks of any great civilization and especially the American dream. And so the devil seeks to destroy that at the family level. You know, so many Christians out there would raise their hand if I just simply stated that uh, it's the destruction of the family that's caused the fall of America. I think everyone who loves God and looks at this can say that. They don't like it when you break it down the way I did. But it starts with building enmity between a man and a woman in a relationship. That this is how you tear a family apart. You separate what God said can't be separated. What God put together, let no man put us under, right? That you, when the man and woman become one flesh, when you unite that way, but unfortunately the devil found a way, and it's because of the of the abuses of the Baal uh, demon who gets in men and makes them drunk on power and makes them take out their aggressions at work on their wife, that makes them paranoid and keep their wife locked up in a closet, you know, don't let them come out, makes them wear a burqa. You know what I'm saying? There's a demon behind that. I'm not saying there ain't, 
I'm just saying the one that's been winning and really tearing up the system lately has been the demonic response to that demon. That, oh no you don't, I am woman, hear me roar. I will not just be equal with you, I'll take precedence over you and I'll be the leader. Right? And that's happens in the Jezebel spirit. And then you have the, the other spirit that says, we don't need family. We don't need babies. We don't need nothing. We're completely independent. We don't need a man. We don't need a house uh, with a man in it. We don't need children. We don't need family. We don't need structure. And uh, I'm an independent agent. And that's the side you have over here with Lilith. And these spirits uh, on both sides and in the middle are responsible for terrific and horrible mayhem in our lives. Have you realized you've been a victim of one or all three of these spirits? That they have us trapped in a pincer maneuver. We are in triangulation between these three entities. With the central entity who don't give a rip one way or the other, he's just trying to destroy us, laughing it up as they fight amongst themselves and tear our world and our families apart. If you're a man listening to this and you've got a woman in your life, treat her the way a woman ought to be treated. Lead her, but don't boss her. Lay down your life for her. Women, if you've got a man in your life, then you should be loyal to him even if he's wrong. Be the voice of reason and love and comfort and show him the feminine side and share your intuition with him. Right? This is the way it was supposed to be. This is what love is based on. But too many times, men want to dominate. Too many times, women want to rebel. The battle of the sexes has torn our country apart. What we had before was working for a while, but there were abuses. They weren't even that widespread, to tell you the truth. Most men treated their wives much better in uh, past times in this country than they do currently then even the best husband now would probably be seen as a louse in the old times when it was your duty to take care of your wife and your family and provide and protect. What I'm telling you is we have strayed from the ancient path that had been working, which is a partnership where the man goes out and faces the danger and the woman has his back. But they're a team. Don't think they're not a team. Just because you're not in front doesn't mean you're not uh, an important part of the team. The guy in front is just toast without somebody watching his back, without somebody to minister to him in, you know, when he's done at work and he comes home, and, you know, when he's done fighting the battles, right? He needs, he needs to know what he's fighting for, a reason to fight. You know, family gives men a reason to fight for their financial uh, security, for their uh, safety, for their community, for their country. Most men who fought in World War II were fighting for their mamas, their sisters, and their sweethearts. They weren't fighting for democracy. They were fighting for family. They were defending the homeland, the hearth. I may be out of style. I might be antiquated. You might be looking at a real life human dinosaur. But I tend to believe we can get along, that relationships can work even in this world of turmoil, outside influences, political and social unrest and agitation, I still think we can find that peace, that bubble where love still exists, where people naturally fall into God's original intent. What he really meant when he said the two shall become one flesh. Unified, a unified family not a fragmented one. If you're in, the, in your position in life, choose carefully so you have a chance at a unified family because that is one of God's greatest gifts to mankind. I once again remind you that I can't continue to make these videos. I can't continue to share this information with you. And uh, I can't continue to do what God's called me to do without the help of those who are being fed you're being fed by this ministry please support this ministry financially because everybody knows if I got to work a day job I don't have much time for preaching and so this is what I intend to do with the rest of my life so support me in my little cabin in the woods uh, I don't ask for much because I don't need much but there's a link in PayPal a link to PayPal in the description there's a link to cash app there there's my email address if you want to talk there's uh, 
P.O. Box if you want to send something tangible and old school to me. I love handwritten letters. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time on the sheet pen. But I'm going to leave you with this powerful prayer. May God surround you and your family in every relationship you have in his ring of fire and hedge of thorns of protection. May he send mighty angels of sufficient rank, authority, and number to drive the demons out of your life, your situation, and your relationships so that they can't undo what God's done, so they can't de destroy your relationships from the inside out, Lord. Surround these relationships and these people and their loved ones in your ring of fire and hedge of thorns, Lord. Dispatch angels around them to keep the peace in Jesus' name. And Lord, give us your peace. Give us the peace of the Holy Ghost that surpasses all understanding. We'll see you next time on the Sheep Pen.